hi, it's Adam from Lucy Pixel. It's a pleasure to see you. And I apologize for this mess. <laughs> I'm a little disorganized today. There, clean, perfect. Um, yeah, this video has been a long time coming. I've been working on it for the last month and a half. Welcome to my 2022 studio tour. And I'm really excited to share it with you. And I apologize for anybody who's been waiting for me to publish a video. This is what I've been busy doing. Learning a new operating system, learning new editing software, learning new plugins and shooting hundreds of shots of B-roll and all that kind of fun stuff. And there's nothing left to me, but I'm so freaking excited. This is such a happy moment for me. Um, however, however, I wouldn't be presenting this to you today if it wasn't for the contribution of a company that's gonna get a really big thank you in just a second. And I discovered them through two of my favorite art YouTubers. Actually, one art YouTuber and one audio YouTuber. The audio YouTuber who I absolutely love is Josh Valor. So a big shout out to Josh Valor, who incidentally is behind several of the pieces that I'm gonna be presenting to you today. So a big shout, shout out to him. And our beloved art YouTuber, Ergo Josh, who is an even bigger studio geek than myself. I'm completely in awe of the stuff that he presents. With that said, uh, they mentioned in their videos the company Grove Made, who I'd kind of heard in passing in other YouTube videos, but then when I saw their studio tours, I was like, oh, that's it. And you're going to see why, because if you saw my studio pre-Grove Made, it is literally the perfect canvas for what it is that they produce. So I reached out to them and I said, listen, I'm planning this big studio tour. I'd love it if I'd be able to present some of your stuff there too. So they very graciously said yes. So a huge thank you to Grove Made for this. And they sent over a few pieces. So thank you for that. And then I fell in love with it so much. I thought, no, 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 no. I want to make this bigger. I want to make this a big, big presentation of their stuff. So I ended up splurging out of my own pocket and completely decorating this entire studio with their stuff. And not only that, but when they, when I told them that I was just about to publish the video, I was just finishing up editing. They said, hey, before you publish it, would you like a discount code to offer to your viewers? And I said, hell yeah. So they said, awesome. If you're watching this video, use this code, LucidPixel. I'll leave it in the description below if my pronunciation of it sucks. Use the code LucidPixel, give yourself a little bit of a discount on checkout. You're gonna fall in love with what it is these guys produce. Guaranteed, and I'm living proof because I'm currently touching it as we speak, okay? So without further ado, let's lift the curtain and let me share my, probably my biggest passion project that nobody knows about, LucidPixel Studios. All right, let's start with the main desk where I do the majority of my work, from teaching to drawing to editing videos and so on. The desk itself is a dual motor programmable sit-stand desk by Prime Cables. I ended up going with this model because it's the least wobbly of the ones I tested. On top is a solid maple wood tabletop by IKEA. I personally prefer the look of solid wood and the weight helps to stabilize the table a little bit. The first piece from Grove Made that we'll be looking at today is the extra large light gray wool desk pad. I fell in love with it so much, I ended up buying three more for the rest of my studio. Now, if you're somebody who's into studio tours like me, then you're most likely familiar with the next piece, a lovely Grove Made headphone stand. This one matches the lighter color scheme. Next is the Grove Made maple pen holder that again matches the decor perfectly and has a lovely weighted quality to it. For my extra headphones, I installed the Brainwaves Underdesk Dual Headphone Mount that connects using 3M adhesive. It's an excellent solution to save desk space and it's nice and discreet. Now moving on to tech, my main work computer is my new Apple M1 Mac Mini. This is the 512 gig model with 16 gigs of RAM and eight core GPU. It has literally replaced my built PC as my daily driver and it's small enough to be tucked away at the back of my desk. Video to come. Plugged into my N1 Mac Mini are two necessary accessories. The first is my Kensington Thunderbolt 3 dock the second accessory is a two terabyte SanDisk external SSD. I personally recommend this 
over buying extra memory directly from Apple. It might be a little bit faster, but comes at a very hefty premium. Now, moving on to monitors. For the type of work that I do, I generally depend on at least two monitors, sometimes even a third when it comes in handy. My main monitor is my beloved Wacom Cintiq 27 QHD, which I bought and reviewed on my channel over six years ago. If you want to check out my humble beginnings, I recommend having a look. My second display is a BenQ PD2500Q. It's a very standard tier monitor, but it has served me incredibly well for a very affordable price. Sometimes, however, I do need a third monitor. That's where the Grove made iPad stand comes in handy, which again, matches the color scheme beautifully. My microphone of choice for working at my computer and teaching is my Rode NT-USB, which I love for its convenience and clean sound. Now, moving on to my gaming desk. The table itself is supported on a pair of Alex drawer units from Ikea. The tabletop itself is actually a solid maple wood countertop from Ikea. I got this idea from random Frank P a few years back and I love the added desk space. On top, you'll notice the second Grove made extra large wool desk pads. This is the dark gray version. My gaming monitor is the 35 inch 144 Hz BenQ XR3501. My gaming monitor is sitting pretty on the Grove Made Premium Plywood Walnut Desk Shelf with dark grey legs to match the dark grey color scheme. I also added the matching dark grey Grove Made Desk Tray. It's a subtle but necessary addition to the stand in my opinion and it completes the look. At either end of the desk shelf are a pair of Corsair LT100 RGB lighting towers. That brings us to two of my first beloved pieces of audio equipment. Sitting on a pair of lovely Soundrise speaker stands are my Vanatu Transparent One Encore speakers. Shout out to Josh Valor for recommending both of these pieces. Although the Vanatus actually produce an impressive amount of bass for the design, I connected them to my SVS SB3000 subwoofer for that extra kick. I also connected my Vanatus to the 2021 edition Blue Sound Node music streamer. My main editing headphones are my Hyphenman Sindaras 2021 edition, sitting on my first of two headphone stands by Woo Audio. This is the black model that supports one pair of headphones. My Sindaras are connected to my fantastic Monoprice THX AAA 788 DAC amp. Now perched above is the Maplewood Grove Made catch-all. Honestly, this is one of the main reasons I reached out to Grovemade in the first place. This is my latest build, a Lee and Lee Corsair build including a total of 13 fans, 3900 XT, 64 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinum RAM. But it's ironic, however, <laughs> that apart from this review video, I haven't turned it on in over a month since I switched to my M1 Mac Mini. Sitting on top of the Corsair ST100 headphone stand are my Corsair Virtuoso SE RGB headphones. And lastly, my favorite gaming keyboard is the Corsair K100 RGB. And my favorite gaming mouse from my collection is the Corsair Wireless Dark Core RGB Pro. what I consider the main entertainment section of my studio, which is my library, console gaming setup, and music listening headphone station. The library itself consists of two white IKEA Kallax libraries sitting side by side, the eight unit and the four unit, to make up the full length of my wall. 
Draped elegantly on top is the medium Grovemade light gray desk pad. You'll also see a few other lovely matching Grovemade pieces, including some orange leather coasters and matching leather mouse pad, which I'm currently using to add an accent of color and designate a space for my remotes. Next are the Maple Grovemade Magic Keyboard and Magic Trackpad holders that I find add a bit of weight and stability and look very elegant. Next is the Grovemade MagSafe iPhone stand, also made of solid hand-carved maple wood with a solid orange metal frame and light gray weighted base to match the color scheme. The heart of my setup is my 2019 12.9-inch iPad Pro with Apple Pencil, my main on-the-go device. Because I work from home most of the time, I usually have it set up on my beloved Kensington Studio dock stand. Next is a handy little black letter remote control holder that has served as an elegant solution to an unreasonable accumulation of remote controls that I have. As for my listening setup, I have my beloved Hyphaman HE1000 SEs. These are connected to my favorite audio setup of all, the all-in-one Name Unity Atom Headphone Edition. Not only the best sounding all-in-one music streamer, but one of my favorite design centerpieces of my entire studio. Over to the far right is the best photo printer that I could get that didn't take up half of my studio the Canon PIXMA Pro 100. Towering over my library is my 49-inch Samsung NU8000 4K HDR TV. My TV sound plays through my JBL wireless 9.1 Dolby Atmos soundbar. I love the wireless rechargeable surround speakers not only are they convenient, but they're some of the best sounding speakers from all of the soundbars that I've tested. least is where I shoot most of my talking head videos. Starting off this new setup is the table itself. This is the exact same maple wood tabletop that my main desk has, supported on a lovely pair of IKEA Lagkapten Mitback table legs. Draped on top is of course the last Grovemade extra large desk pads that we'll be looking at today. This one is again the dark grey version. There are actually a few very practical benefits for content creators like myself. Being made of thick wool means that it helps with sound isolation when recording audio, just like right now. It also helps reducing the tapping noises that my bracelets or rings make when I'm recording videos. Lastly, it actually makes for a lovely high contrast and gently textured backdrop for product and book reviews that I do. The frame itself consists of two newer heavy duty light stands and a Manfrotto 272B adjustable background holder. I only recommend the Manfrotto 272B for this type of setup for build quality and ease of adjustment. Now, holding my camera and mics are three different models of Manfrotto Magic Arm. The first one holding my camera is the Manfrotto 244. This is the most robust and sturdy of the arms in most cases. The one holding my microphone is the Triple Arm 195 AB3. And the one holding my hair light is the dual Manfrotto 195 AB2. I recommend those smaller ones for these types of microphones because the heavier one tends to sag. That said, my top-down camera is the A6400 APS-C camera. Right next to that is my main shotgun mic for talking head videos, the Rode NTG5. 
Next to that is my overhead rig, the Aperture Amarin HR672. My audio interface is the Mix Pre 3, which can support up to three balanced microphones at once. For this type of setup, I highly recommend high quality Mogami cables for the best sound isolation. My second mic is the one I do all of my voiceovers with, including this one right now, the famous Shure SM7B. Again, connected to my Mix Pre 3 using high quality Mogami cables. Pro tip. I use Manfrotto 323 quick release plates for everything from my camera to my audio interface to my sliders. It's small, sturdy, and most importantly, fast and efficient for swapping devices back and forth. When it comes to video lighting, I'm rocking a three-point lighting setup using exclusively aperture lights. My key light is my first aperture 120D Mark II. My rim, or kicker light, is the second Aperture 120D Mark II connected to a light stand next to my main desk. My second hair light that I mentioned before is the Aperture Amarin HR672. Stepping behind my recording table, you'll find my main camera, the Sony A7 III full frame. My A7 III is currently sitting on my Edelkrone Slider 1 V2 and Edelkrone Flex Tilt Head. It's nice and compact and doesn't take up too much space in this tight spot behind my table. The power cable and HDMI are connected all the time, this time to my third BenQ monitor, which is a second BenQ PD2500Q. Mounted to the wall is one of my three IKEA SCADIS wall mounts. This is where I store my main lenses, which consist mostly of the Sigma Art or contemporary prime lenses. Finally, stepping back, I'd like to highlight a few last important things. The entire studio is lit with either LifeX RGB smart bulbs or strips. This way I have full control over the light temperature and color of my lighting setup, both when recording videos, as well as when I'm painting or editing. If you've been enjoying all these beautiful camera modes during the video, that's all thanks to my Edelkrone camera motion control equipment. This includes my Edelkrone Slider Plus and Head Plus, as well as my Edelkrone Jib One, Head One, and Pan Pro. These are all interchangeable and incredibly practical. I use them on almost every shoot, which is why I keep them set up at all times. Now, I wanted to save this lovely piece for last. The reason this is so dear to me is because, believe it or not, I won it during a giveaway from one of my favorite audio YouTubers on the entire platform, Jay Solsick. After I'd won it, Jay discovered that I was a fellow YouTuber because his wife recognized me. Through this lucky coincidence, I ended up making a YouTuber friend who just happens to be a fellow Canadian. It's one of those rare and special stories that I just love sharing and I'm reminded of it every time I look at it. In closing, I want to once again extend a huge thank you to Grovemade for helping me put the final touches on my studio. I want to thank you for taking the time to enjoy a little behind the scenes and I wish you all a very happy 2022. Take care.